Good evening, YouTube. Welcome back to the Loose Transistor channel. I'm Lucas, and uh, I'm bringing to you guys today a very special series of videos on a prototype frame that I'm going to be building. This is a prototype frame from Detroit Detroit Multi Rotors that was uh, graciously given to me by the awesome by Norm from uh, Beaver FPV. So make sure you guys check out BeaverFPV.com. These guys are great to work with. They help me out a lot. Fast shipping, great parts, and uh, just all around great people to deal with. So anyway, back to the Detroit Multi Rotors frame. This is called the WP-17, and it is a five inch stretch X. It's a super light frame. It looks like pretty good quality uh, carbon fiber. I already have gone ahead and done the carbon fiber preparation, meaning that I've already done the sanding and the cyanoacrylate treatment on the edges. I will say that this took a lot of sanding. It took almost an hour of just sanding to get these to be uh, nice and not sharp and trying to cut me but uh, since this is a prototype frame I'm sure that that's just part of the prototype I'm not gonna worry too much about it I know the Detroit multi-rotor guys uh, put a lot of quality into their work so I'm sure when this comes down to the production time you won't have to do nearly as much sanding as I did but uh, let's uh, take a quick look here at the frame itself so the arms are separate into two pieces like this which is kind of neat I guess if you break one you can just get another set and replace it and you'll be good to go uh, super light. They look pretty, uh, pretty strong. I think they're four millimeters, but let me just pull out the calipers here in two seconds. We'll find out. So yeah, I will be breaking down this video into a series, and I'll be releasing them pretty much as I go. So today, I'm just going to talk about the the frame itself and the components, and, uh, and then I'm going to start doing the build, and I'll be releasing the build in parts as I go through. Uh, so let's take a look here. So the frame is, let's make sure that I'm zeroed. Oh, that's not zeroed. Okay, let's see. 3.97, so yeah, roughly four millimeters, pretty good, pretty much. And uh, so it comes with the two arms and uh, the bottom plate is actually split in two. So it sandwiches the arms uh, basically in this fashion. So you'll have these guys right there. Boom, they'll hold the arm together. You can put your strap around the bottom right there, no problem. Uh, the top and bottom plate are probably two millimeters. Yep, two millimeters. And the top plate where the camera goes, it's also two millimeters. So it's a pr pretty tight little build. Uh, all in all, it'll be something about, let's take a look, about that big. So not bad at all. It looks really, really light. It also looks sturdy. I actually do really like the, the top plate right here. As you can see, it mounts the camera pretty back and gives you a lot of angle, so you can you can run some pretty aggressive camera angles here. Uh, the frame also comes with uh, a few TPU printed parts. These are the sidewalls, and uh, actually these holes here are not for the USB. They're actually for the camera. So the camera will slot right there like that. You just put a screw through it, and it'll hold it in place. And uh, I'm curious to see how this is going to turn out. It is pretty flexible, so uh, we'll see how good it is at actually holding the camera angle as we go. But uh, the impression of the print is actually pretty good. I didn't have to do that much cleanup to it, which is nice. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty interested to see how that's all gonna work out with the frame. It did come with the uh, hex uh, set of standoffs, just four of them. Uh, this looks like a very, very straightforward, simple build. Uh, not a lot of components to it, which means that this frame is gonna go together pretty quick. I might even do the, the frame assembly while you guys are watching here today. Uh, so let's start going through the components here. We'll start with the flight controller. So uh, I've been very, very, very happy with the Omnibus F3. I've been telling the guys at the FPV chat that that's a great, uh, great flight controller. Uh, I put it on pretty much all my builds now. I only have one build that is running a DTFC. Everything else is running on the Omnibus F3. I will say that it is a little bit of a pain in the ass to wire, but it's not terrible and it's definitely worth the trouble. And I'll tell you why. Um, for one, it has an SPI connected gyro, and it's really good, it's super clean. All my, my quadricopters have been hard mounted with this FC, no problems with noise, super easy to tune, I've had no problems with that. With that. The other thing is that it has a built-in OSD that actually uses the Betaflight uh, tab, which means that you can do all your configuration in one program without having to worry about FTDI tools and hooking up to this and Windows drivers and all that crap. No, you just connect to the USB, go to the OSD tab, and you can edit it, and honestly, the OSD so far has been pretty freaking excellent. Um, but the drawback and why I say that this board is a little bit difficult to wire is because 
it requires you to wire the, the battery positive and battery negative to the FC and then run a positive lead out of the FC and onto your PDB and also a ground lead from the FC to the PDB. So they're kind of essentially in parallel. Uh, the reason for that is seriously just so that you can get current reading and voltage and also to power the FC. But I mean, if you're gonna go through the trouble of doing all that, I don't understand why they just didn't make this a full AIO and actually have the PDB part for the for soldering the the ESCs, but whatever, that's the choice that the guy made. It's still a great board. I still think that it flies awesome. And uh, it also has a nice little SD card that you can use for your black box so you can have gigabytes and gigabytes of flight logs if that's what you're into. Uh, one way that they tried to address the fact that this is a fairly difficult board to wire was uh, by by uh, developing this little daughter board. Now this daughter board is nothing more than just a PCB with some stuff etched on it. It has no components in it whatsoever. However, it basically acts as a PDB. So you can wire this, uh, you can wire your ESCs to it on the sides right here. It also has a signal and a ground for the ESC. So you can wire them going off to the sides here and here. Uh, you can run that, that parallel shunt from the FC to the PDB right over these two holes over here. And if you put some pin headers right there and you mate the two like that, boom, it becomes basically an AIO. It's pretty much good to go. However, if you do solder the pins, then you're going to have a bit of a trouble if you need to work on it. But you can usually reach, if you're good with the solder iron, you can reach from the sides and you can still access the, the ESC wires if you need to. It also has a little spot right there for uh, a buzzer, but it's a very small buzzer. Uh, my buzzer actually happens to be a bit too big to fit there and uh, too tall, so I might just wire it differently. I'll figure it out later. I'm not too worried about it. Uh, that's the easy part. So that's the flight controller, Omnibus F3 AIO. Uh, there's a ton of different versions of it. I don't remember exactly what version this one is. I'll try to put it on the comments, but uh, it's the one that actually has the battery positive and ground, and uh, sorry, battery positive and uh, VCC out on the top, and then a big giant ground on the bottom. So that was the flight controller. Uh, we'll move on to the powertrain of the of the quad. <clears throat> So for the motors, I have selected the DYS Race Edition uh, 2205-2550KV. I uh, actually really, really like these motors as well. Um, I've been My first build with, those, with this powertrain was uh, Jekyll the, the Martian. And uh, man, this thing flies great. It's so much power. It, it, it's kind of ridiculous. I, I love it. So I decided to go with the same sort of treatment since uh, it's a race quad. I figured I'm going to give it as much power as I can and uh, we'll go from there. More power, more better, right? So yeah, that's the 2550s. I'm sure most of you guys are pretty familiar with them. Not too much to go on about those. Um, let's see, ESCs, right. So uh, I picked the DYS. XS BL Heli S 30 amp ESCs. Uh, again, have the same ones in the Martian. They, they fly great, uh, easy to tune. So far I had, had no problems with it, long punch outs, anything. They can handle these motors, no problem. I'm sure they could handle 20 amps, but I, I just feel safer with the 30 amps. And uh, so that's the ESCs. Uh, for the VTX, I'm using a leftover uh, FXT 799T 25 milliwatt race one. Uh, it has a stupid pigtail in it right now. I'm gonna remove that and solder a different one. I might end up doing uh, this sort of uh, VTX mounting with this guy as well because uh, I've been flying my Garuda and my Space One in this configuration and I actually really like it. I haven't really noticed any drawbacks in my flight characteristics so far. It's been flying pretty damn good. I really don't notice any drawbacks there. But uh, I feel like the quad is a lot more protected and I don't worry about crashing it so much. I was having problems with VTXs breaking and punching through wires in my Garuda. So that seems to solve that problem. What? Sorry about that interruption, guys. There's apparently a family emergency in that I'm apparently the only person who can operate the router. So anyway, back to what we were doing here. 
Uh, we already discussed the drivetrain, the frame, the motors, and the VTX. Uh, last thing is the camera. It's just a Foxeer XAT700. Uh, I had it laying around. Uh, I just put a GoPro 2 lens on it, and I'm actually quite liking how it looks like on the video. So I'm excited to see how that, how that turns out. And uh, that pretty much covers it in terms of components. Uh, however, one thing that you're going to see me put on literally everything that goes on here is uh, Drone Dry. Now, this is made by a company called Autobotics and it's available at Beaver FPV. So, check out Beaver FPV, get yourself some Drone Dry. You put this stuff on your electronics and it basically prevents any water damage. The Detroit Multi Rotor guys were running these at the Niagara event and they were flying in the rain without any problems whatsoever. I have tried that myself no problems at all it basically makes your quad entirely waterproof so with the winter coming up it's definitely a good idea to invest on some sort of waterproofing for your drone if you want to keep flying as the months get colder and wetter so yeah that pretty much covers it for the equipment uh, and this is pretty much part one of the video so stay tuned for part two which should be coming out in the next couple of days where i'm going to do the frame build and start laying out some components and figuring out how everything is going to fit together and uh, we're going to take this journey together as we get this thing up and running and tuned. So stay tuned and come back to Loose Transistor and uh, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Thanks a lot, guys.